Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, Nady the Coder. In the previous lecture of the React Query, which was the very first lecture on React Query, we talked about use query hook, and we saw how we can access our fetch data using the use query hook. That was totally the happy case scenario or the successful scenario that we talked about. But in this lecture, we will see how we can handle different errors in the React Query. Let's say we have, for example, a 404 error or a 500 error, any kind of error code, how we can handle that and using the React Query. So let's just dive into the lecture. This is the previous code that we have, and you can see that we have a to-do hook, the a custom hook that we created. And over here, we're making use of the use query hook that basically fits the data for us using the fit API. And we are making call to this endpoint, and we're getting a to-do based on the ID from the to-dos list. And uh, we're getting some response over here and we were getting some task and the title of the task. Let's just check out the JSON placeholder API and see what endpoints do we have. So in here, you can see that we have posts, we have comments or, or, and albums over here. And here we want to use um, the posts because we have comments over here. So for each post, we will have some comments over here. So that's why I want to make use of the post API over here, the post endpoint. So instead of making the request to now to post uh, to to do's we'll make use of the post and i'll change it to posts i'll do some renamings over here post and also instead of calling it to do i'll call it post i'll go make change over here and uh, i think that's it when i save it and you can still see the data over here. When I go to the network tab, I refresh. You can see the call is successful. We're getting some response from, the, from this and we're getting the body ID title and user ID. And we are also getting the body from here. So let us just put it over here and we can call it description and post.body. And instead of making it uh, H1s over here, let's just make it H3. And let's just make it a P tag, just make it a little bit smaller and make a little bit good. So you can see task number this and title is basically this. And now we have this description. I'll get rid of this as well. I don't need them. Just to make it a little bit nicer. So yeah. So in order to get, for example, now uh, in the, on the JSON placeholder documentation, you can see we have 100 posts. What if I exceed that number and I call, for example, the API with 101 or 102 or something like that? So what happens then? Let's call it with 101. I'll save it. When I go to the network tab, you can see on the 101 call, we are getting a 404 because we just have 100 posts and 100 a 101 post that uh, we can now find that and you can see that we don't have any any data on the task number we don't have the task number the title in and even the description so that's basically what we don't want to show to the user in the real world application so what we can do about that so first of all we have to check for some errors if there is some kind of error uh, or the query or the post number that we passed uh, does not exist then what we can do over here and before sending the response we can put it f condition and we can say f response dot status as 404 then just throw an error and uh, the message should be posed and i can also pass the id and instead of making it this i'll use backticks so post number this not found uh, this should be the message and if there is no error if the status code or the the response of status is not 404 then it will just uh, send this uh, post as a json in response so here we are just taking if the status code is 404 then just throw an error and this error message should be this so now we will save it and i'll see we are still getting nothing so in order to handle that 
we have this flag over here that we are grabbing out of the use query hook, uh, which shows us if there is any error. So after the is loading check, uh, we will check because uh, we are um, we are already making the call. So it, regardless of uh, checking for the is error before the loading, it doesn't make sense. So we'll do the, uh, do this after the is loading, and I can also destructure the is error because we are returning it from here. And I'll do if there is any error. So if you remember that is error is basically a boolean, just like is loading. So it, it, the value you would be either true or false. So based on that, we can say or you know return a message that would say um, that will just show the mess the error message to us. So instead of doing this. I'll do something like this. And since we're also returning the error over here, so if, in case of error, we are also returning this error. So, uh, and we are typecasting it to error, which is basically the type of error. And we can also destructure it over here. And I'll make use of this. So I can simply say error.message. And when I save this, so when I have this, let's say, it's now in the loading state and after some time you'll see the error message over here you can see 101 not found so how does it really work with react query i'll just go to a network tab and i'll refresh you can see one call is made and it is failed it is still in, in, in the loading phase it made a second call and it failed again and it I made a third retry and a fourth retry and all of it returned 404. So then it shows me the message that 101 not found. So basically what React Query does is, by default, it will make few retries before showing you the error message. So on the first call, when it get the 404 message, it will retry and call this endpoint again and wait for the response. And if it, it get the same error again or any other error again, it will retry again, again, and again for a few times. And after that, it will show you this message. So this is how React Query handles the error for you. We can also limit those retries uh, and we can pass that as the third parameter. So you can see this is the first parameter that we're passing to the use query. This is the second parameter. That is basically the callback function we are making. And there is this third parameter that we can pass, which is basically the configuration object. And we can say retry and we can we can say false. So if we set the retry to false and save it, I'll refresh. So once the call is made, so only on one call, it will print out 101 not found. And also you have, you might have noticed that when I click somewhere on the window or the document or outside of the document, for example, if I click it over here, inside and then outside, and then for example, I click outside of the document and then click inside, you can see again and again, the call is made. So for this, we have another configuration that's called refetch on window focus. So if you don't want that behavior, then you can just make it false and save it. When I refresh, so when I click outside, then click inside, then click outside, and then click inside. So it won't make any other calls. So basically that use cases is useful when you have some data and uh, you want to refresh the data, for example, on some events or something like that. But basically that is this that is done on window focus. So if you you click the window somewhere or click outside of the window and then click the document again, so it should refresh the data. So that is the use case that is it is useful for but in our use case we don't need it so that's why i made it false also the retry takes uh, either a boolean false or it can take a number and it will specify the number of retries you want to make and in order to refit uh, in order to before showing the error you can make that number of retries so for example i want to make 10 retries when i refresh you can see one call is made, then second, then third, then fourth, 
and you can see that we have now made 10 requests and all of the uh, all of the 10 requests are failed and after the 10 requests we're seeing the one one not found so basically this is how the retries works let's just put it back to one alt seven and when i refresh you can see one request is made and then we are getting one one not found this is basically how we make use of the fetch to, in order to make the request to this API and this is how we can handle the request. But there is an easier way to do and we don't have to, you know, explicitly check for the conditions over here and then, you know, condition to send the data back. In that case, we can make use of Axios. If you are not aware of Axios, then you can just go to the website and you can see what is Axios. I'll open the website and you can see it's a promise based HTTP client for the browser and Node.js. And you can just copy this and install it over here. Use a term using the terminal. I can just patch over here, npm my axios. So it means npm install axios. And I'll install it. So instead of making use of this, I can simply do axios.get. Okay. And I don't need this whole bunch of code and instead I'll simply do response dot data you can see it over here so you can see that I got rid of the errors and all that and uh, for now I'll just make it 100 and let's see if it works out you can see we are making the call using Axios it's might be working perfectly and also if I make it for example 101 and then save it you can see the loading state and you can directly see the error message that's called request fail with a status code 404 so we don't have to explicitly define our error messages and all that so that's why axios is a very good choice for making your you know uh, ajax calls because it handles everything for you automatically so you don't have to worry about or handle all of the errors by yourself just like edit in the fetch for now let's say that we want to uh, make the retries three I'll save it I'll just refresh just to make it a fresh call and see the clear board so you can see two calls are made and then we can see the last call and then you'll see the message directly over here so yeah this is basically how we can handle errors using react query you can see how useful it is uh, I know if for some person people it will be a bit harder in the first go but once you get used to it it's, it's a lot easier and you know a lot handy so yeah this is the end of the lecture over here i hope you have learned learned something new from this lecture please share the video and subscribe the channel and until then i'll see you in the next lecture